Hey guys, I'm the Travis Wentz, and uh, a new expansion for Hearthstone was announced today at BlizzCon called The Mean Streets of Gadget Zen, and uh, 31 cards have been revealed so far, and I just want to go through them and uh, give a quick little review of some of them. So, going through the neutral cards, there's this one cost card uh, called Mistress of Mixtures. Uh, stats are 2-2, two, two, and Death Rattle restore 4 health to both players. Um, I, it, I feel like it's a great card, basically anti-aggro. Um, it's kind of like that, uh, that Druid card that's 1 cost, um, except it restores 4 health to both players, so it's like good for control, I guess, but um, I think it's great. It's uh, basically the new Zombie Chow. Um, except it doesn't get that third health stat line, but I think that that's good because the third health stat line is kind of too powerful in my opinion. Next we have Friendly Bartender. Uh, two cost, two, three. Uh, at the end of your turn, restore one health to your hero. Um, uh, it's pretty decent. Probably not going to see constructed play unless, like, aggro decks are the new meta that's just like you're playing 80% aggro. Um, uh, in Arena it's yeah it's a 2 cost 2-3 two, sure pretty good pretty whatever 2 drop. Alright the next one Kooky Chemist 4 cost 4-4 four, four. Battlecry swap the attack and health of a minion um, it's basically a bigger crazed Alchemist, and I like how they have the chemist and alchemist um, kind of playing off the same type of words. Um, it's four cost, four four, not terrible. Um, you'd probably pick this card for the same reasons you'd pick Crazed Alchemist, except I feel like Crazed Alchemist is probably better because you're probably just using it as a tech card to combo to kill something. Um, that normally has a lot of health and not much attack and then you just swap it and trade it in um... whatever next card is second rate bruiser um... five cost four five taunt and it costs two less if your opponent has at least three minions um... like i don't know it's seems pretty good um, It'll probably come up in Arena sometimes where uh, you'll draw this card when your opponent has three minions and then this guy only costs three. So basically like a discounted Yeti that gets Taunt as well. So I guess it's okay. Seems okay. Um, the next card, uh, Big Time Racketeer, a six cost one one whose battle cry summons a six six ogre. So basically... It's a 6 cost 7-7, seven, seven, which is really what um, the Faceless uh, card in the, the Shamans have. That's a, it's a 4 cost 7-7, seven, seven, but overloads for 2, so it's kind of 6 cost, except they can play it earlier. Um, the sad thing is that Bran Bronzebeard is going to be cycling out relatively soon, and this card would be so cool with Bran just... Summon, play this card, summon two six sixes. That would be really awesome. Um, I don't know. It, it's okay. It's pretty good in Arena. The next card is Fell Orc Soul Fiend. A three cost three seven, and at the start of your turn, deal two damage to this minion. I feel like this card is really, really good. Um, it's it's kind of anti-aggro. It's pro it's like good in control decks, I think maybe, um, because if you think about it, um, if your uh, opponent has a board, like say they played a one drop and they played a two drop, you didn't play anything those turns, and you play this card, um, they're like it's kind of like anti-zoo because the zoo isn't going to really want to trade into it. Um, and kill it that turn. Um, I guess they could try to just deal 5 damage to it, 
so then it dies on your turn. Kind of interesting. Um, if it did die on your turn and you're playing Paladin, I guess it would get the discount on Solemn Vigil. But uh, um, also kind of interesting in Priest, since Priest can keep healing it every turn, since, you know, so many times Priests just pass their turns with so much mana left. I don't know. Um, also Northshire Cleric, I guess. I don't know. Kind of interesting. I think it's pretty cool. The next card. Wind Up Burglebot. <laughs> this card's pretty cool. Um, it's a 6 cost 5-5 five, five mech, and whenever this attacks a minion and survives, draw a card. Um, I guess it's okay. I don't see this getting constructed play. Um, I'm, it's an epic too, which is kind of silly. I feel like if this card was 5 cost, it still wouldn't see play. Um, kind of strange, huh? I don't know. Uh, maybe if it had 6 health, I don't know. It just doesn't seem... I mean, it, it couldn't be 5 cost and 6 health. Like, if it's 6 cost, you could give it 6, th six health, I think. Um, otherwise, it would power creep the pit fighter. Um, anyways, next card. Uh, Patches the Pirate. It's a legendary 1 cost 1-1. One, one. And it says, it has charge, and it says, after you play a pirate, summon this minion from your deck. This mechanic is something I'm really excited about. I hope we see more of it in the future. Because summoning cards from your deck is really cool, especially, especially when it's part of that individual card's mechanic. So what's cool is um, Warriors can play in Zoss the first mate on turn one, and this will just summon this from the deck, and you'll attack your opponent in the face and then you'll attack your opponent in the face with your weapon as well, I guess you'll be ahead 2 damage. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Um, it depends on if we get more great pirate cards. We'll see. It's kind of cool. In Arena, you'll probably never pick this card over the other legendaries it shows you. Um, the next card is Finja, the Flying Star. It's a 5-cost 2-4 um, legendary card, and it says... As, as stealth, and it says, whenever this attacks a, and kills a minion, summon two Murlocs from your deck. So, um, I think this is showing um, that, like, they're trying to push Murlocs more. Uh, what's also sad is that, um, gosh, I am really awful with some of the card names right now. Um, the Paladin Murloc... Uh, that inspires, summons a random murloc, is a great one, I'm thinking, like, playing this in a paladin deck, especially because um, paladin plays a lot of buffing cards, and uh, also has cards that give them divine shield, so you could give this divine shield and attack something that maybe has high attack and would normally kill this, but this kills it and doesn't die. Um, I don't know if the mechanic will work if this dies as well, I assume it wouldn't, but... I don't know, but summoning two Murlocs from your deck seems pretty good. Um, if it was four cost, I feel like it would be a really good card. Five cost is kind of late, and it doesn't have charge, but stealth is maybe good enough. Kind of cool. Anyways, on to um, the warrior cards revealed is we have a one, co a one cost spell card called I Know a Guy, and it says discover a taunt minion. Um, I think it's... Uh, kind of cool, maybe in like a Yogg control warrior, I guess, because it's a spell. Um, it's discovering cards. I mean, it's another like I, I, cards like this make me think of Reno like decks, and uh, the new card coming up, uh, Kazakis, that is also kind of like Reno. Um, just playing these cards in your deck because they can discover other cards that you maybe wanted to play two of, but you didn't because of this certain mechanic. Um, I, don't know. I think it's cool. The next card is actually a, um, a warrior, paladin, and hunter card. It is called Grime Street Informant. It's a two cost, one one, battle cry, discover a hunter, paladin, or warrior card. I've heard that these cards, um, when, uh, when the three cards show up, the discover mechanic will show you one from each class. 
um, which is kind of interesting. Um, this card is basically a new jeweled scarab that is semi-class specific because it is part of the new type of tri-class cards where you can pl only play this card in a hunter, paladin, or warrior deck. Um, very interesting. Um, probably won't see play. Um, it's You would pick this card in Arena for the same reason you would pick Jeweled Scarab, I guess, in Arena. The next card is called Cabal Courier. It is another tri-class card. It's a 3 cost 2-2, two, two, and it says Battle Cry Discover a Mage, Priest, or Warlock card. Um, so, also, uh, just a reminder, these will be spells or minions that it'll discover. Um, and this is another tri-class card for Mage, Priest, and Warlock. Um, kind of just an interesting card. Um, I guess you would be playing these cards um, for a Reno-like mechanic, I suppose. Um, they don't seem amazing. They seem okay. In Arena, this is basically a 3 cost 2-2 two, two kind of draw card. Uh, the next card is a Legendary called Kazakus. It's a 4 cost 3-3. Three, three. It says, Battlecry, if your deck has no duplicates, create a custom spell. Now, when I was watching the BlizzCon stream, I didn't, uh, uh, some, something went wrong with the stream in the middle of it showing this mechanic to me, but basically when you play this card, um, if your deck has no duplicates, so like Reno, Reno um, create a custom spell, though, this time, and what it'll do is it'll show three card costs. In the video it showed one, three, and ten, I think. So that is the cost of the spell that you will be creating, and then it it pops up these other um, uh, spell mechanics in the next one, and then I believe it does it one more time where it shows you three options, and you, it combines those effects together and makes that a spell and adds it to your hand. Really cool mechanic. I really hope to see more of this in the future of Hearthstone. Um, yeah, really cool, really cool. It is also, I should mention, another tri-class card. Although it looks like a neutral minion, it is a Mage, Priest, or Warlock card only. Which is kind of fitting since those are kind of the spellcasters of Hearthstone. Next we are on to a Shaman card that is um, also a tri-class card. It is... Uh, called Lotus Agents. It is for druids, rogues, and shamans. It's a 5 cost 5-3 five, battle cry. Discover a rogue, druid, or shaman card. So basically, like we already saw with the Cabal Courier and the Grime Street, Grime Street Informant, it is discovering a card from the classes that can play this card. And once again, it will show one druid card, one rogue card, one shaman card. Um, I feel like this card isn't that great, but then again, I can be undermining it because uh, Ethereal Conjurer saw a lot of play, and it's a 5 cost 6-3, discover a mage spell. That was kind of specific, and also there's a lot of amazing mage spells. So, I don't know. This is, I, I don't know, it gets killed by a 2-drop, you know? Um, kind of sad. A one, it gets killed by a one and two cost spell. Um, who knows? I don't know. Maybe it'll see play. And the other thing it's doing, I think, is just trying to, I think what they're trying to do is they want everybody to make a Kazakus deck. And so they're creating all these different, um, discover type cards, which are really cool. And, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Um, next, we are on to Rogue cards. Um, the first card is Counterfeit Coin, a zero-cost spell. Gain one mana crystal this turn only. Um, I kind of saw this type of card coming. Um, if you've been looking at any of the gadgets and teasers uh, or reading those newspapers, um, it kind of mentions something about uh, like coins and uh, like red mana crystals and and it was kind of seemed like it was like a stealthy rogue class it was talking about, so 
Basically, this is a worse innervate that is for rogues. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, it's basically anti-power creep, as Disguised Toast put it. Um, but I guess, you know, uh, rogues like to combo. Um, you could basically, if you're a rogue and you were going first, um, on turn two you could basically coin out, because if you happen to have counterfeit coin in your deck, and you had it, you could coin out your SI agent and kill your um, opponent's one drop. If you didn't have a one drop, they had a one drop, your SI agent kills it, I don't know. Um, also, the obvious combos with Gadgets and Auctioneer, maybe it'll see play. In more Miracle Rogue decks, I guess. The next card is a... Uh, is uh, called Lotus Assassin. It is a 5 cost 5-5. Five, five. It is an epic, and it has stealth, and it says whenever this minion kills an enemy, gain stealth. This is really cool. Um, I'm really happy to see more cards have the stealth mechanic. Um, this card will be really good in Arena, I feel like. Uh, just the fact that you can play this, it has stealth. It's basically a Stranglethorn Tiger that when it kills things, it gets stealth again, um, which is really cool. Um, kind of, you could play it in those combo decks that are trying to use Cold Blood, um, make it so it can kill things, and then it gets stealth again. I don't know. The next cards we have are some Priest cards. Uh, the first one is a one-cost spell called Potion of Madness, Gain control of an enemy minion with two or less attack until the end of the turn. Um, this is interesting. So basically, Shadow Madness costs four mana and gains control of a minion that has three or less attack until the end of the turn. This is three mana cheaper for only one attack less. I feel like, well, especially currently in the meta because Min Rage Shaman is all over the place. Um... This card grabs the Tunnel Trogs, grabs the Totems, grabs the Feral Spirits. Um, it grabs a decent amount of things. Um, it also can get through the... What is it? The Infested Torin. Um, you could grab the... Uh, what is the Warrior card that's a 4 cost 2, 6 Taunt? Um, yeah, just one mana. Just grab it. it. A little Cabal Shadow Priest effect, but only for um, that turn. You're basically going to be grabbing Loot Hoarders with this, I think. Um, and then just killing them, drawing a card. Um, pretty interesting, though. The next is called Cabal Talon Priest. A 3 cost 3-4, three, the standard value stat line, with a battle cry, give friendly minion plus 3 health. This is basically Dark Cultist's battle cry version. Um, what's cool about this is you have control over which one is it's going on, which is cool. Um, I mean, if, maybe if priests get great two drops, um, you could do it. Um, maybe you just have a Northshire cleric that's on the field still, and you just put it up to six health. I don't know. Um, it's kind of cool, but priests are, you know, I don't know. We'll see. The next is called pint-sized potion. It's also a one-cost spell for priests, which is interesting because I feel like Blizzard is realizing that priests do nothing for so long in the early game that they are just an awful class, and they're giving them these cheap cards, although um, they're not playable on turn one. Um, anyways, this is an interesting card. It says, give all enemy minions minus three attack this turn only. This is pretty cool. Um, basically, what's going to happen is Cabal Shadow Priest is going to be a two of in every Priest deck, I think. And maybe they're doing that because of uh, the loss of Entomb that Priests will be experiencing relatively soon. But um, this is cool. You can um, What could you steal? You can basically steal anything that's a five cost or I mean a 5 attack minion, basically combo that with Cabal Shadow Priest, that's pretty cool. Uh, 
Comment below with some, if you think of with any of these cards, if you think of some really cool combos or some ideas that I'm not bringing up, um, mention them. I would uh, really like to see um, your ideas. Um, next we have um, Draconoid Operative. It's a five cost five six, so the standard value stats these days. Um, it's a dragon. And it says, Battlecry, if you're holding a dragon, discover a card in your opponent's deck. This is awesome. First of all, I was so scared of uh, dragons losing um, their synergies. And, you know, it seems as though uh, Dragon Priest has kind of been the priest deck to play if you decide to play priest. And what's cool is that it, it itself is a dragon. So um, I kind of like the conditions of if you're holding a dragon, do this. That way it's not too overpowered, so you kind of have to have a dragon, but it itself has its own synergy um, with itself. And what's cool is discovering a card in your opponent's deck. So it's kind of going along with the priest theme of like thought steal and um, uh, shifting shades, stealing cards from your opponent's deck. What I like about this is usually your opponent is going to put good cards in their deck. So um, if you're discovering, you're getting three options. So you're getting to choose which card you're putting in your in your hand, which I think is really great. I'm really excited about. Um, I think it will definitely see play. The next card is really cool and will definitely combo um, uh, with the Draconoid Operative. It is a six cost spell. It says Dragonfire Potion, deal five damage to all minions except dragons. This is really cool. Um, also, it's filling that six mana slot that um, priests will also be losing Excavated Evil, which was a great board clear that they needed. This is dealing five damage, which is insane. It's going to get past the thing from below. It's going to get past the fire elementals. As you can tell, I've been playing against a lot of mid-range shaman recently. This is really cool. i um, really stoked about it. And the fact that it's not hurting your dragons is cool. It'll be interesting in like a dragon mirror match though. Um, might not be as good, we'll see. Next we are on to some paladin cards. We have a one cost spell called Getaway Kodo. It is a secret, of course, and it says when a friendly minion dies, return it to your hand. So basically, what's interesting about this is, I don't know if this would actually become a thing with secret paladin again. I mean, obviously Avenge was an amazing secret. Um, but we will be losing Mysterious Challenger relatively soon, so maybe Blizzard is okay with giving us some good secrets, and maybe we'll, there will be more in this expansion. I sure hope so. Um, but it says, you know, when a friendly minion dies, return it to your hand. If you comboed it with Redemption too, I guess, and it was on something cool, like... I mean, I guess Piloted Shredder isn't around these days, but that would be really cool, like putting a Shredder back in your hand in an arena. This would be really great. It's basically a worse duplicate, I guess, but I mean, it's a, it's a cheaper cost, so... I don't know. I assume that it is triggering the death rattles of the minions as well. Not just, they like, they would die but go to your hand. Hopefully, it still triggers the death rattles. Next, we have another one-cost card. It's a minion called Mean Street Marshal. It's a one-cost one-one, or uh, sorry, one-cost one-two. Death Rattle. If this minion has two or more attack, draw a card. Um, what's interesting is I didn't know that uh, Death Rattles would recognize a minion's um, current stats if they're buffed. You know, so. That's kind of interesting. I guess um, basically you play this on turn one, turn two you play an abusive sergeant and kill their um, their two drop or one drop or whatever, and then you get to draw a card. Um, or if you play Silver Moon Portal on this and he becomes a three four, and uh, whenever he dies, you get to draw a card. I don't know. Um, it also seems like Blizzard is still trying to push for this curve stone um, type of game. Uh, where you're like one drop, two drop, three drop, which I'm not necessarily a huge fan of. Um, I'm, you know, it's really rough when your opponent opens up the one drop and you don't, and then you just enter despair. Um, anyways, the next card is a paladin spell called Small Time Recruits. It's a three cost epic. 
It says draw three one-cost minions from your deck. I uh, I don't see why this would ever see play. Uh, first of all, the soonest turn you can play it is um, on turn two, if you opened up the coin. And at that point, why would you want more one drops? I mean, I guess this is like if you're playing an aggro paladin deck and it's like, I don't know, you you drew, you just have so many one drops in your deck. You're just one drop on turn two, two more one drops. Um, and turn three, uh, three, a, a two drop and a one drop. And then, I don't know, like turn four, you play this card and then play another one of the one drops. And so like you're kind of drawing cards because you're just playing so many minions. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. If you, if once again, if you can think of any combos or interesting uh, interactions with these cards, please leave them in the comment section below, and uh, let's discuss. Um, next, we have a Paladin Legendary. Um, basically, a mini Tyrion that doesn't give you a weapon. Unfortunately, it's a three cost two two, Divine Shield and Taunt. Damage dealt by this minion also heals your hero. What I'm curious, I assume that it is also talking about if my opponent attacks into it. If my opponent attacks into this, is it going to heal my hero as well? Um, I believe so. Um, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. What's crazy is, I guess you on turn three you play this, turn four you blessings of kings this, and it's a 6-6, six, six, and but you don't need to heal yourself at that point, so I don't know. Um, but that's cool. It would heal you for six if you did, which is cool. Um, next, we have a mage card called Manic Soulcaster. It is a three cost, three four. So once again, as you've been seeing in here, lots of cards with the, the standard value stat line. And it says, Battlecry, choose a friendly minion. Shuffle a copy into your deck. That's kind of interesting, kind of cool. Um, I mean, normally you'd want to play a three-cost card on turn three, I guess. I don't know if you've got a really cool two-drop that you played the turn before and you want another one of it in your deck to draw later. Um, I don't know. Seems interesting. Put another uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice in your deck. Um, put another Flame Waker in your deck. Although that will also be cycling out soon as well, um, I guess you could uh, you could play on like a, a value minion in the later game combo with it. Um, I don't know. Seems okay. In arena, this is pretty good. I think uh, you can play it on turn three, and that's whatever. And maybe later you combo it with a, a value minion, and it puts it into your deck, and maybe you draw that minion again. Who knows? Um, next, we have a Hunter card. It is a weapon. It's a 5 cost, uh, 2 attack, 4 durability called Piranha Launcher. It says, whenever your hero attacks, summon a 1-1 one, one Piranha. This is interesting. I think, once again, Blizzard is trying to cause Hunters to have more of a late game. Um, this is not going to be the standard Hunter deck uh, card because you're playing it on turn 5 at the earliest but you're going to be killing uh, cheap minions with it most of the time or finishing off minions with it and then just summoning a 1-1. Um, I don't know. doesn't seem that great. Um, probably won't see play, but I would love, I would love to see a control hunter deck somehow in the future. That would be cool. Next. We have a couple cool druid cards. Some of these are my favorite so far out of the expansion. Um, the first is called Mark of the Lotus. It's a one cost spell that says give your minions plus one plus one. This is pretty cool in my opinion. It's basically Power of the Wild, but as a one cost card that doesn't have the choice of summoning um, the three two. Um, I think it's really cool. I really liked playing the Violet Teacher kind of spell combo druid 
where you're just playing like Living Roots, Living Roots, Power of the Wild, Mark of the Lotus now. So it's summoning the apprentice and buffing it. Um, I think it's really cool. I, I'm i pretty excited for it. Um, I think it will see play. Next we have a spell called Pilfered Power. It's a three cost epic and it says gain an empty mana crystal for each friendly minion. This is interesting to me. Um, I feel like this card is much better than Astral Communion, first of all. Um, I think it's kind of cool, but the Dream is going to be very rare because I feel like the Dream is going to be turn one, you play Living Roots, which I'm I'm pretty sure might <sighs> might be getting cycled out relatively soon as well. But that would be, that'll be sad, but basically turn one Living Roots, uh, hope they don't kill it. Turn two, um, you Living Roots, and then Innervate uh, Pilfered Power. Uh, so then on turn three, you would have six mana. Yeah, you'd have six mana. Which would be pretty crazy, would probably be all of the ramp you would need, but that, of course, is the dream situation. Um, I can't see this really being that great, but if you think about it, Wild Growth is a two-cost um, gain one, whereas this is a three-cost potentially gain two. I mean, maybe you play... Uh, Play the one drop two two, and then turn two you play another two drop and it doesn't die for some reason. And then turn three, pilfered power, and then uh, turn four you'll have six mana. I don't know. Maybe it will see play, maybe it won't. The next is called Lunar Visions. It's a five cost spell. It says draw two cards. Minions drawn cost two less. Um, I feel like this card could have cost four. Because the thing is, um, it's I feel like it's trying to say, hey, druids, you're supposed to play um, big minions. And uh, you have to ramp to get those minions out. So you have to play spells that make it so you ramp. Um, but if you draw spells off this, it's really bad. If you draw one spell off of this... It's still not that great because you have to think Arcane Intellect is a 3 cost 2-2. Two, two. And if it hits one minion, it's kind of fair, I guess. It kind of is exactly an Arcane Intellect. Um, the sad part is, is it costs 5. So... I don't know. The meta is so um, like aggro and mid-range right now, I feel. that, But Druids are still making it somehow. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Um, give me your thoughts. Um, the last card we're going to review today is a druid legendary called Kun the Forgotten King. Or is it Kun? I don't know. Um, he's a 10 cost 7-7. Seven, seven. It says choose one, gain 10 armor, or refresh your mana crystals. This means on turn 10, you could play this guy. If he's the first card you play, you will have 10 mana again. Um, what's crazy is I'm certain I saw a video from Kriparian pretty recently where he was reviewing some user-created cards and someone created a card just like this that um, had the same type of concept of uh, it costing more than you would normally want to pay for it. But after you play it, it refunds a certain number of mana crystals to you. And in this case, it refreshes all of them. So, um, on turn 8, you could innervate this out, and it'll refresh all 8 of your crystals. Um, I think, I don't think it would give you 10 that turn, but that would be crazy. Um, but basically, I think it's cool. Um, it also gives the option of armor, which sometimes you just do need, and I really do like that druids can gain armor. But anyways, these are the cards revealed so far. There are 132 total in the set, and it will be released 
in early December. Um, I'm really excited about the Tri-Class cards. I'm really excited about some of the mechanics they are introducing in here, and it looks like they are maybe headed in the right direction with Hearthstone, and I'm just excited for some new, refreshing um, experiences. So, anyways, uh, leave a comment below. Um, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash thetraviswentz. You can also follow me on all of my social medias. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.